Good morning. My name is Dr. Kathleen Gallo, and I am the Dean for the Hofstra Northwell School of Graduate Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. And I'm also the Chief Learning Officer and Executive Vice President for Northwell Health. Welcome to the convocation, for the class of 2020. I would first like to start by asking that we all take a moment of silence for those who we have lost during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. I'd like to thank the president of Hofstra University, Stuart Rabinowitz, as well as Michael Dowling, the CEO and president of Northwell Health with their vision and ongoing support as this school grows in an effort to meet the needs of the communities that we serve. I would also like to thank the board of trustees from both organizations, Hofstra University and Northwell Health, for their support is much appreciated and essential to our success. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and students, I sincerely thank the Hagedorn Foundation, Donald and Barbara Zucker, the Faye J. Linder Foundation, and the family of Meg Smith for their generosity in supporting our students. We are very fortunate to have such dedicated benefactors. It is now my honor to introduce to you Susan Knopfler. Susan is currently the Chief nursing officer and vice president for nursing at Huntington Hospital, a four-time magnet designated facility. Ms. Knopfler joined Huntington from Long Island Jewish Medical Center where she served as senior administrative director of the emergency department. Throughout a career that has spanned 30 years, Ms. Knopfler has held various positions beginning as a staff nurse in the neonatal intensive care unit at North Shore University Hospital. Career highlights include leadership roles as administrative supervisor and nursing care coordinator at St. Francis Hospital before joining LIJ in 2008. Ms. Kanafla earned a bachelor's of science in nursing from the University of Delaware and a master's in public health administration from Long Island University CW Post. She is a certified nurse executive and is a member of the American Organization of Nurse Leaders and Sigma Theta Talk. She recently spearheaded the Northwell Health System's Nursing Strategic Plan for Humanism and has been recognized by Becker's Hospital Review as one of the top 60 CNOs to know in 2017. Please join me in welcoming Susan to give the keynote address. Good morning, everyone. The first thing I have to say is how incredibly I am impressed with this arrangement, uh, given the times and the situation we're in right now. Dean Gallo, esteemed faculty, proud parents and partners, devoted friends and graduates, congratulations to all of you. I come to you from Huntington Hospital, where I can assure you <laughs> that I have been PPE compliant for the entire crisis. I'm honored to be with you on this momentous day. I'm thrilled for you and for all the people who support you, the people that encouraged you, the people that hugged you and dried your tears, the people who laughed with you, the people who are so incredibly proud of you today. I thought I would start by sharing the story of how I became a nurse. Who knew back then that I would be sitting here today as the chief nursing officer in the midst of a pandemic? For me, it all began in a quiet town in Bayport. I didn't know I wanted to be a nurse. In fact, I thought I wanted to be a physician. So I enrolled in a school pre-med upstate New York. And after about a year and a half, I realized, I, I don't know if this is for me. So I decided to change over into nursing and I entered the University of Delaware, the Fighting Blue Hens. Now get this, I left the Lemoyne Dolphins for the Fighting Blue Hens. I, you know, I was looking for something more like the Cougars or the Panthers, but so be it. I went to the University of Delaware. I entered the College of Nursing excited, but with some trepidation. 
And you have probably been through this, that at the end of every semester, you sit with your advisor and your advisor, your advisor says to you, so Sue, how did you enjoy that clinical experience? Now I would answer hesitantly and say, well, it wasn't quite the fit I had hoped for. One of my first rotations was home care nursing, going door to door only to knock and no one answered. But I knew they were there. The curtains were moving and there was movement in the house, but they were reluctant to open the door to me. I felt helpless and I felt useless. So at the end of the semester, my advisor asked me, she said, Sue, how did you enjoy that rotation? And I answered, are you kidding? I could not get them to answer the door. No one would talk to me. So I moved on to the next semester, which was psychiatry. And all of the care plans in the world could not prepare me to talk to patients that were compulsive, unpredictable, depressed. I felt helpless. And to be honest, I felt afraid. So the semester came to an end. And my advisor said, so Sue, how do you enjoy your psych rotation? I answered, to tell you the truth, I didn't. So after psych, I entered pediatrics and thought with such relief, my goodness, I love kids. I can do this. Little did I know that these children could cross their arms and refuse to take their medications time and time again. I cajoled, I tried trickery, I tried distraction, no luck. So once again, I felt helpless and it was the end of the semester. And this time, as I sat across the table from my advisor, I think she was crossing her fingers under the table when she asked me, how'd you enjoy your pediatric rotation, Sue? And I answered, you know, those kids, those kids were manipulating me. I don't think it's for me. So you can see where I'm going with this. You're probably wondering, in fact, how in the world did Sue graduate from nursing school? Well, as the last semester approached, I met with my advisor and she said, Sue, I'm getting a little worried about you and your nursing career. And I responded, I'm getting a little worried about me and my nursing career. And then a miracle happened. My niece, Kate, was born premature at 28 weeks. She was the feistiest baby I ever laid eyes on. I watched the team care for her so competently and so lovingly, and then care for my brother and sister-in-law and all of us so competently and tenderly. I knew right then and there this is my destiny. I'm going to be a neonatal intensive care unit nurse. Now, of course, my advisor recommended that I go into medical surgical nursing first to learn my prioritization and to get my timing down. That little stubborn streak in me went out and I waited. I was patient and I got that coveted NICU position at North Shore University Hospital. By the way, my niece, Kate, is living a beautiful life with her husband, Joe, and is working as a guidance counselor in a middle school. So why do I tell you this story? Because you might not always know what your passion is. And the truth is, it's okay. What you need to remember is keep moving forward. Who knows where the next step will lead? Follow your heart. Seize the next opportunity, stay open and try something new. It's a journey. Don't sit back in the back seat and say, when are we going to get there? Are we almost there? Enjoy the journey. You'll get there and you'll get beyond. Oh, the places you'll go. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening now for you as nurse practitioners entering this field. 
For more than 50 years, nurse practitioners have been involved in acute care, chronic care, community settings. And your presence is absolutely essential. As Americans gain access to broader services, you will be needed. As we journey through this labyrinth of healthcare, we're finding that you are often the linchpin in achieving a solid continuum of care. Nurse practitioners are advancing the shift towards community care. By 2030, one in five Americans will be over the age of 65. NPs are likely to be the ones to provide that home-based care. And your increasing autonomy and intensifying recognition from the healthcare community is a driving factor in your job growth. So I hope you see why you are such a vital component of the good health of healthcare. Now let's talk about that transition. How do we go from today and what do the next steps look like? Since I'm not an NP, I sought guidance. Where else do you go? The internet. I wanted to seek some words of wisdom that I could share with you. I discovered an excerpt on the emotional stages of life as a new graduate nurse practitioner. Now, I'm sure you recall the Kubler-Ross stages of grief. Well, thank goodness the emotional stages of a new grad NP are much different, but in ways they are predictable, like the stages of grief. So the first one is excitement. Simply put, congratulations, you did it. You made it. The second is relief. Yes, you made it. And you say to yourself, wow, maybe life will go back to normal now. But today we don't know what that normal is. Then we reach enthusiasm. It's a new challenge for you. It's a new frontier. It's a whole new way of looking at your role in healthcare. And then comes overwhelm. Oh my, you feel way over your head. In fact, you realize I can no longer enter into the medical record MD aware because the buck stops with you. And you may feel beat down. You may feel inadequate and burdens are weighing on you and maybe knocking you down. But stage six, you are even keeled. You begin to feel confident. Your autonomy and competence improves on a daily basis. And now you rise up and you're hopeful. You realize things are looking up. You actually find yourself saying, I enjoy this. And then there's acceptance. These challenges you face are now manageable. And in fact, you welcome the next challenge. And finally, there's confidence. No worries, I've got this. In fact, I'm damn good. You are a unique group. You have lived, learned, and worked through a crisis of enormous proportion, unprecedented, unparalleled, extraordinary, unrivaled. These words still don't really capture the enormity of it all. I don't think it's a coincidence that this crisis occurred in the year of the nurse, 2020. But your compassion, your bravery, your selflessness, your leadership, your resilience, all of that that got you here today carried all of us through this crisis. And I thank you. I thank you on behalf of our patients, our families, the teams working alongside you. As we walk through the halls today, when we enter our units, we see a blur of blue and green scrubs. We pass each other with only our eyes showing above our masks. Everyone appears nameless, but we soon to be begin to see our names across the top of our face shield on the back of our scrubs, and we're once again identifying ourselves. We long to hear the song, Here Comes the Sun. 
an uplifting reminder that one of our COVID positive patients is being discharged, giving us hope. Hope lives here. This pandemic has forced us to face challenging situations within all of our organizations and has impacted us in countless ways, some of which we've yet to recognize. It has made us feel softer, but stronger, cynical, but more sincere, discouraged, but hopeful, saddened, but joyful, uncertain, but wiser, alone, but together. And throughout all of it, we have stayed true to our values. We are truly compassionate. We are truly innovative. We are truly ambitious. We are truly together and we are truly ourselves. Congratulations to all of you. You have worked tirelessly to get here. You know that you have graduated from this school, which is a bright star in our Northwell constellation. Feel proud. You are truly made for this. Be well and stay safe, my friends. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan, for that moving and motivating keynote speech. I am Dr. Renee McLeod, and I am chair of the MP program. And it is my pleasure now to begin to introduce the class representative of the class of 2020. The class was given the opportunity to vote on a member of their cohort who they felt best embodies the mission vision and values of the graduate nursing program. It is my pleasure to announce that Jessica Mangeli has been selected by her peers to give the class speech. Jessica, would you please give the address on behalf of the class of 2020? Dear colleagues, as we embark on new beginnings, I reminisce on the journey we have been through to obtain our graduate degree. I recall being a novice student with big dreams and few plans. As we near the finish line, I would like to thank the team of brilliant professors and staff that have molded our paths and have given us the essential tools to be successful providers. I look back on the many tears I have shed and the times I felt defeated. In those moments, I was fortunate to have an amazing support system comprised of family, friends, professors, mentors, and managers. Each of those individuals stood by me, helped pull me forward, and gave me hope when I thought there was none. Our graduate program challenges us to be the best version of ourselves. The school encourages you to reach for places you never could have dreamed of. I'm grateful for the opportunity we have to grow as humans and future leaders. Hofstra School of Graduate Nursing, if anything, you have taught us to be resilient. We have continued our education while managing difficult days at work, balancing hectic schedules at home, and the ine inevitable obstacles that linger in our personal lives. Through it all, we have continued our roads to become nurse practitioners and have made it to the other side dis despite the hardship. This resiliency was the most crucial lesson of all because with certainty, obstacles await us as providers. It will be difficult to prove our contribu contributions as we find our place in the medical community. Also, most imminently, our fight to end this historic pandemic and save our communities. But as we have, we will once again learn our lessons and continue to grow as compassionate providers. To conclude, I wish to leave you with these quotes from inspirational leaders. Florence Nightingale, live life when you have it. Life is a splendid gift. There's nothing small about it. And Melinda Gates, the more you can be authentic, the happier you're going to be. And life will work itself around that. Thank you. We did it. Thank you so much, Jessica. 
We will now present the 2020 awards for our students and faculty. It is my pleasure to announce the Nurse Practitioner Student Achievement Award, which was voted on by the faculty of the Graduate Nursing Program. This award represents the student who holistically embodies the values of the Graduate Nursing Program and promotes the role of an advanced practice nurse. In the year of the nurse 2020, the Nurse Practitioner Student Achievement Award goes to Jessica Trentacos. Congratulations, Jessica. We are very proud and know that you will make an excellent nurse practitioner. And now I'd like to introduce my colleague, uh, Dr. Mary Lemp. Good morning, everyone. Dr. Mary Lemp here. Um, I am the program director of the Family Nurse Practitioner Track. And this uh, Family Nurse Practitioner Award goes to the student who best exemplifies the mission, vision, and values of the School of Nursing. It is my privilege and honor to announce that this year the award is present, being presented to Jessica Mangeli. Congratulations, Jessica. We're all so proud of you. Thank you, Dr. Lim. This year represents the first year that we are graduating the psych mental health nurse practitioners. And this year on behalf of the program director, Patricia Jansen, it is my pleasure to give this award to Fahamir Jean Baptiste. Congratulations, Fahamir. We are so proud of your growth in this role. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Stephanie Keating, and I am the program director of the Adult Gerontology Acute Care Nurse Practitioner Track. And I'm honored to represent the student uh, who best exemplifies the mission, vision, and values of the School of Nursing. This year, the AGACMP award goes to Bieta Bodergowski. Congratulations, Bieta. Good for her. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Keating. I would now like to bring up one of our students, uh, Joan Mahoney. Good morning, everyone. Our class was asked to select a faculty member who demonstrates excellence and the embodying of the Pearls philosophy in both their teaching and learning practices. It is my honor to present the award to Dr. Michael Casera for the third year in a row. Congratulations, Dr. Cassara. I think you can let somebody else win. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to bring up Dr. Barbara DeVoe. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Barbara DeVoe, Associate Dean of Interprofessional Education. And this award is going to be bestowed upon three students who volunteered their time to go and meet with a doctor, Dr. Mayo, a nephrologist, and his patients in dialysis, along with their families and the interprofessional team that cares for them. As a result of their interview, they then wrote their um, prose about what they did see and how they felt. If they so imp impressed the doctors and the patients, they will be asked to present it to an interprofessional uh, audience of doctors, physicians, PAs, et cetera. So it is my pleasure at this time to uh, award this award to Jessica Mangeli, Jessica Trentacost, and Samantha Marinaro. Congratulations to all of you and thank you for your professionalism. Thank you so much, Dr. DeVoe. I would now like to bring up Dr. Barbara Callahan. Good morning and congratulations, everyone. I am the Associate Dean for Clinical Affairs, and it's absolutely my pleasure to award the Hagedorn Hofstra Scholar Award to Vanessa Yor. Congratulations, Vanessa. Thank you, Dr. Callahan. As we've already heard from our Dean and of course our wonderful keynote speaker, this is the year of the nurse 2020 and we have had an unprecedented pandemic in COVID-19. It is my honor to award to the class of 2020, the Hero Award. 
We are also proud of your resilience and your heroism. And so you all are getting this award. We are also happy to announce that the class of 2020 will be receiving a $50 gift card to 1-800-Flowers.com. Thank you to the Hofstra Northwell Hagedorn Honor Society for their generous contribution in helping us bestow this award to you all. Thank you so much. And now Dean Gallo. So now it is time for the Dean's Award, which is um, actually the only decision that I make by myself throughout the whole year. So it is an honor for me to present the Dean's Award to Jennifer Mayer. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Barbara Callahan, and she will introduce the class of 2020. Good morning. It is my honor to now introduce to you our nurse practitioner graduates, the class of 2020. Jean Aguila. Prashetta Aziza. Shira Bass. Destiny Bernard. John Paul Cahigas. Genesis Castro. Christina Guzzo. Catrice Ann Delone. Calsane Dickey. Talia Ice. Vanessa Elliott. Sasha Espinal. Tammy Vero. Ruby Garzone. Bandu George. Caroline Gus. Michelle Gulfi. Stephen Irby. Janice Jacob. Vladimir Jean Batiste. Linda Johnny. Stephen Jones. Jeanette Lee. Joan Mahoney.
Samantha Mirabali. Christy Matthew. Erin May. Karen McDonald. Jennifer Meyer. Lauren Miraboli. Jessica Mangelli. Shiva Mashta Philippe Nara Stephanie Ortiz Vieta Podgorski. Ross Reinman. Renee Rodriguez. Robert Santana. Crystal Santiago. Frederick Shields. Brianne Smith. Marguerite So Cho. Alexandra Steinman. Lorianne. Stevens, Colleen Stubbs, Jessica Trentacosta, Edison Tiley. Vanessa Yor. Sini Varghese.
Mary Rose Waters. Althea Webster Sumuda. Blair Whitley. Dahan Yang. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Congratulations, class of 2020. And now is our official first class of the decade. I'd like to introduce Frederick Shields from the Psych Mental Health and E program to read his poem, Bent But Not Broken. Oh, thank you, Dr. McLeod. First, I must say congratulations to the class of 2020. We finally did it. Congratulations to the, to the staff, the faculty, Dean Gallo for your extraordinary leadership, Dr. McLeod for always being supportive and approachable throughout this whole process. My psych professor, Professor Jansen, for always pushing us to be exceptional psychiatric uh, nurse practitioners. So without further ado, the title of my, my poem is called Bent But Not Broken. Class of quarantine and COVID-19. As I started out on this journey three years ago, who knew how it would go? I felt the road was too rough, the terrain too steep, and many times I felt like letting go. But my family kept on pushing that I stayed the course, take the beatings, and get up each time as I go, but never letting go. Life has a way of training us for things we can't know. Who knew the way 2020 would go? We had big plans and big dreams, but life said, oh no. All that training, resilience, and perseverance, you need to know show. To those whipped and bent by corona, but not broken, oh no. As a psych NP, I will hear the cases, wipe the faces, and see the internal bruises, and the many scars worn by survivors and frontline soldiers who fought and won this gruesome war, like I, they too survived, bent, but not broken. So let's not give in to the feelings within, but keep on persevering as we surely win, bent, but not broken. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fred, for that moving poem. And now Barbara DeVoe. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to read the oath. The oath was created by the very first graduating class so I invite all the graduates to read along as I recite it, please. I promise to face challenges and obstacles with courage, strength, compassion, and excellence, and always remember that on the other side of the important work is a human, someone who is loved and who loves. I will remain humble, remembering my strengths, and the strengths of all disciplines while embracing the values of leadership, scholarship, collaboration, and humanism. I will continue to challenge existing norms to achieve high quality, value-based healthcare outcomes while increasing access to care. I commit to lifelong learning and providing dignity fostering care by integrating the innovations of nursing silence with the art of healing. I will foster scholarship in a culture of excellence, discovery, integration, application, and education, linking scientific discovery to advance global health. I will remain committed to the path of excellence, innovation, discovery, and inquiry, and, and to developing advanced practice nurses and communities of practice. And I will respect diversity and have the courage to lead and positively influence future societal norms. Thank you, Dr. Gerald. And now, Dean Gallo. So 
So while it may be difficult to do during this pandemic, the faculty, the staff, and I wanted to take this hour to focus on you, the class of 2020. This is a wonderful and exciting day for all of us. Now, we are always proud of our graduating classes year after year, but you, class of 2020, are a special class of nurse practitioner graduates. You not only pursued a very rigorous program from day one, but this last semester has really highlighted your strength, your resilience, your never give up attitude, and your heroism. For those joining us today that are not faculty or graduates, I want you to know that these graduates are the dedicated nurses on the front line of the COVID-19 crisis. Day and night, day after day, they are caring for their patients, their families, and each other. They also had to prepare for class, complete their assignments, and take their exams. On top of everything else, many of them have also begun interviewing for their nurse practitioner roles at Northwell Health. Some have even had offers pending to them. All of the 53 graduates have exceeded our expectations. And I like to remind people that our graduates are extraordinary individuals. They display the courage to invest their time in new programs. They are extremely hardworking, resilient, and capable of managing a full-time job, family responsibilities, and maintaining their academic requirements. For the class of 2020, on top of all of those responsibilities, they are the front line during the COVID crisis. Our academic requirements are much more rigorous than other programs, as the students can attest to. These graduates could have chosen an easier route, but they did not. They accepted the challenge, and on behalf of the faculty, staff, and myself, know that we have much admiration for you. We look forward to our graduates becoming our future preceptors and faculty. So to our graduates, we are confident that you will continue to embody the values of our school, courage, collaboration, humanism, leadership, innovation, learning, scholarship, diversity, global health, and excellence. You have exemplified courage and humanism and have embraced the commonalities and differences amongst yourselves, your faculty, and the healthcare teams with, you have, with whom you have practiced with and the consumers of our health. As uh, always, remember that you have an awesome responsibility to your school, your workplace, and to society at large. There is no turning back now. You are an advanced practice nurse. I cannot express the amount of pride that we have for all of you. One last note, no one succeeds in a vacuum. Success is a team sport. What you have just successfully completed is no easy feat. Please take a moment and thank those who have supported you through these last three years, particularly this last semester, your family, your friends, your colleagues, and your community. And now I would like to present to everybody the class of 2020. I would also like to take a moment to thank family, friends, faculty, staff, and colleagues for the support that they have given our students and the school. I hope each and every one of you can take a little bit of time to celebrate this moment. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2020.